It is good to see all of you this morning. We're glad you're here. Another beautiful, sunshiny day. God has really blessed us through the last couple of weeks. We need to be thankful for that. We have announcements. Okay. Evening worship and study in Revelation at 6 o'clock tonight. Acts class meets Thursday at 6. Cookout and worship at the Pines on Sunday evening the 29th at 5 o'clock. Sign up for provisions. Provision, this sounds like you guys are going on a long night or something. Yeah. Sign up for food. How's that? <coughs> Is on the back table. Thanks in advance. Bring your own lawn chair if you wish. Oh, another thing. Very important. These little envelopes that say vision of faith. Word came through that we're not getting as many as we used to. And I'm not going to fly you for money. That's not my job. But if you have an extra dollar, we sure could use it because just to let you know, we are very close to getting everything going out there. But we'll give you some more information later. But we are closer than we have ever been and maybe the closest we'll ever be. So. Keep in mind, if you've got an extra 50 cents, it all helps. So, thank you, Ellie. Thank you, sir. Last time I saw a little kid come up to the old job was JT. And the guy from uh, Operation Evangelize, Dave Lucas, was preaching. Dave preaches real loud. JT got around this whole son for this he might have He got around me and one other guy came up the middle aisle, looked right at him, right in the face and said, Quit that yelling. <laughs> and for those of you that know JT, you can understand. <laughs> anyway, that's the way that's it as far as announcements. As I said, keep us in prayer. Things are moving. And hopefully before long, so will we. So let's let's just <laughs> Keep praying to the Lord that everything works out as it looks like it's going to. Look to him this morning and revive us again.
Be a sober spirit. Be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. But resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same experiences of suffering are being accomplished by your brethren who are in the world. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself perfect, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are our guide and protector and father that one day we can be with you. We ask now as we enter the service that you be with us in this time. Father, that you will make every, let everything we do be to your honor and glory as we gather around the table, as we sing praises. And Father, as we hear your word proclaimed. Watch over us, for it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Next praise hymn is Shine, Jesus, Shine. <laughs> Situation. 
Michelle Snyder, who's preparing for another surgery. Garth Best, who was down ill this past week. I see Garth back there this morning, so he at least put one on up to climb the steps and be here. Good to see you, Garth. Uh, prayer leading up to and on September 23rd as Christian Financial Resources reviews our loan application for the Long Drive building. That's part of what I alluded to earlier. So pray that everything goes well there. Lindsay Ann, as she continues her treatment of overcoming cancer. Spencer Snyder, Mike and Cindy's grandson, as doctors look for answers for him. Anonymous requests, as always. We have several of those. A prayer request for Gail Hunter for safe travels. Uh, this is Linda Denise's sister, and she's moving back to Ohio from Florida. So get my family back together. Also, Paul, Pete Culver, cancer, as a need for Christ. And Margaret Bailey's daughter, police reporter. Having surgery tomorrow, double mastectomy. I'll ask you please pray for her. And that's our prayer list this morning. Prayer in the sanctuary, after which Brother Donnie Pope will lead our hearts in prayer. Richard? Yes! Uh, Betsy, would you please tell Richard about the children? Put on the prayer list, please. Uh, I asked. That we pray for the black family. We had prayed for we prayed for Christian and his dad. Um, Christian's the little boy that had um, leukemia from Ben and Anna's church, and the dad was then in a motorcycle accident. The little boy that he was in the hospital with um, is going home soon to heaven. Uh, they did Christmas yesterday. They spent the whole week doing holidays and everything. Just really pray for them because they're having a very difficult time with this. And also, another little girl from um, Ben and Anna's church in the Black Church um, has come down with the same leukemia that Christian has. So if you would, please, please keep them in your prayers. Okay, you got that? Okay, prayer in the sanctuary.
1 Corinthians 15, 55 to 58. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks, thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your toil is not vain in the Lord. So do this in the morning.
Let us pray. Lord, as we come to this time and service to give back to you, let us give us loving hearts, open hearts. If it wasn't for his son Jesus, we wouldn't be in this room today, given this ability to do this. So as we do this in this time, focus on his son, what he has done for us, and that cross behind me. Look at that and realize what a wonderful gift the Lord has sent in the form of his son, that we can have salvation and eternity together. And I have blessing upon these sons, Lord, that are you about to receive. Use it the way you see fit, because it's only for you, God, that we're going to achieve anything. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. 
At that age, I'll just tell the joke, right? But you get three letters, and you'd have to give up, get up and do something. I find it interesting. There's 66 books in the Bible, and he divided by 22, which is great. Yeah. Got to play with those numbers. We have 66 letters, which we received directly from God, that really is, in our society, a forgotten treasure. Kids, it's good to have you this morning, because on October 3rd, three weeks from this Thursday, it is National Bring Your Bible to School Day. October 3rd. Bring your Bibles to school, and I know Jules is not my dad did. Right? Bring your Bibles to school. Not on your phone, but bring your actual Bible. And their slogan is, bring it, share it, live it. Bring it, share it, and live it. And what I'd like to do is begin a sermon series in the next couple of weeks on how to study the Bible. How many of you have had trouble understanding parts of the Bible, or maybe a whole book of the Bible? Which is probably one of the most difficult books to understand. Revelation. You know what the next one is? To me, Ezekiel. Have you ever heard me do a study on Ezekiel? No. Ezekiel can be very difficult as well. Not God's fault, it's just my understanding needs to grow and my study needs to grow deeper. Today we're going to look at how to study the Bible. Some pointers. We'll start with some pointers. Not going to cover all the pointers. How the Bible come to be? What sets the Bible apart from all of the books? And then fourthly, the human element, the human element in the Word of God. And I'd like to begin by sharing these words, the forgotten treasure of God's Word. We sang a song earlier just a few moments ago called Shine Who? Shine Jesus Shine. Send forth your word and let there be light. Folks. We don't have the word of God, there'll be no light. That's why we're living in a dark society today. The forgotten treasure of God's word. I penned these the other day for an introduction. God's word is a treasure. Why? Because of who it reveals and the virtues that should guide our life and guard our soul. But it's a treasure for more than reasons just there. It is also a treasure from God because God's word also reveals to us his people, the people that belong to him. Remember 9-11 in 2001, when we understood the treasure of our country was not the gross domestic or the GDP, the, the domestic product, the production of our, our manufacturing organization. We understand that the treasure of our nation was and is for people. And so I'd like to look at the Word of God, not just as a treasure because God's the one who reveals to us, but because we're revealing to us God's people as well. And I wonder sometimes if we have forgotten, as I said, on 9 11 one the Sunday following that, we had 132 in attendance. That's about 30 or 40 percent increase in our attendance because everyone understood our nation was in trouble and we, we came together seeking God. We saw Democrats and Republicans standing on the front. Was it the Supreme Court where they stood up front and sang openly, God bless America? Remember that day? Remember that day? And you were asking yourselves, how long will this last? which lasted a couple of weeks, two or three weeks. And every year, we kind of go back and we just don't really remember. And this particular, I don't know who, I took that off the internet, we'll always remember this bulletin board office. And I've never done one quite like that, because I've never done an American Bowl Eagles before, and I was scared to try it. But I thought, hey, nothing ventures, nothing gained. It's going to be a try. But just to burn that image, and as we come around the Lord's table, and the blood of the covenant that sealed the deal. God's will is us. Will we remember that throughout the week? There's a video, and I think the adults should be the one to Google this one. It's called The Falling Man. Have you ever seen the picture of the man that was falling from the World Trade Center? They don't know who it was, but one of the victims that died. So drastic was the situation that. Rather than burn the flame, thought it better to jump. And there were many who did. And the photographer who took the picture did not even realize that he had photographed the falling man. He was just taking photos of the buildings that day and have to capture that. You can Google it. It's called, they just submitted the title, The Falling Man. And when they interviewed the one who took the picture, he said, I'm actually glad I took the picture because we were able to connect, to identify. There's 
the man that went to work that morning, not realizing he was not here. I should have prayed he went home. That's to be with the Lord. I should have prayed that. They interviewed a man on TV this past week who they believe to be the oldest World War II veteran. Any World War II veteran with us today? Is there any of you as part of the team? Now, bless you who serve him, regardless of when you serve, he's 110 years old. He attributes his long life to the fact that he says, I love people. His daughter, I can't imagine how old his daughter is, they were interviewing her. And when he turned 100 years old, she asked him, How old do you uh, intend to live? He said, 112. And so she was saying, On the news, just as like we have only two more years. And they all kind of chuckled at that. But then I thought, If he dies in two years, he dies. And he goes to stand before the same one that we will stand before one day. Will he make it home? Will they? Every one of them, every one of us, take the presence of God, this word, this treasure that is so easily forgotten. We have a treasure this morning as we gather for hearing the word of God, sharing the Lord's Supper, giving of our tithes, sharing our love for each other, a fellowship, to shake hands, to give a hug, to know that we are family. What greater treasure can we have? So how do you study the Bible? Well, here's some pointers. And you can access this at bookdalechurchofchrist.com. There is a link. Go to bookdalechurchofchrist.com and then go to the link that says how to study the Bible if you're on the internet. If you're not on the internet, I'll be preparing this for sure that some of you may already have. It was one of us giving us some Bible college by our speed book, Professor Andy Day, simply entitled How to Study the Bible. Well, how many of you know what it takes to work? Stay. Study the Bible. Give all diligence. Second Timothy two fifteen says, "Give all diligence." I heard a story the other day about a man at the zoo that was crying. He said, Why are you crying? He said, "The elephant in the zoo, the elephant died." Did you have an emotional attachment to this elephant? No. Well, why are you crying? He said, "Because I have to dig the grave." <laughs> takes a lot of work to study the Bible. It's not for lazy people. From industrious people. How many of you know the pictures behind them are not the ones you only see with the kids with a Bible in their hand? Or parents for that matter. They'll have a phone, right? Some of you do this morning, that's good, because I'm assuming you're looking at a Bible app. A lot of times it's not to study the Bible when you see all those devices. If you're going to approach the Word of God, and I like to look at it not just how to study the Bible, but how to approach the Bible. You cannot approach it like a man in the military who jumped into the foxhole as the bombs and artillery were coming all around him, and he found a, a necklace with a cross on it. I think it was a crucifix, if I remember the story correctly. I hope it wasn't a true story, but it may have been. He fell into the foxhole, he grabbed the crucifix, quickly turned to one of his fellow soldiers with the bomb exploded next to him and says, Quick, tell me how to work this thing. Well, when you take the word of God in your hand, can't work it. It works for you. One man said, Well, I've been I've been through the Bible many times and I've never been inspired by it. Well, if you let the Bible work for you, you'll come to a different story. You understand what I'm saying? Not coming to it to just, hey, what can I get out of this guy? But who can I become? So you can be honest, number one. You must be honest when you approach this book. Try not to come to it for it or against it, maybe they would say. You must be unprejudiced. You must not be prejudiced in its favor or against, but simply allow the Bible to deliver its own message. You'll be honest and let the Bible speak. Remember in the old days when E. F. Hutton speaks, people listen. And so when you're reading God's word, would you understand it's God who's speaking? So don't interrupt God. When you're reading a passage of scripture with which you are violently opposed, you're looking at that scripture and saying, man, I don't agree with that. That's Let God speak. Let him deliver his message. Be honest, be humble. Humble. Willing to accept the teaching that you're seeking to read. Thirdly, to be reverent. To understand that this book is a message of God's revelation to man. 
and not to demand our professors thought and our mind not be the sharpest when we are investigating its truths. Because it's that small voice of God's word sometimes that's speaking. And we live in a world that song is saying, take time to be holy while the world, what, rushes on? Just be still and sound and hear God's voice as he speaks to us through the word of God. Life is short, isn't it? I mean, it's short. We live it but once. We cannot afford to make a mistake about where we're headed for eternal destiny. And the said, I believe he's right. Therefore, we must study the word of God reverently, humbly, and devotionally, and diligently. Read it when you're fresh. Study it when you're fresh. You choose the time regularly, systematically, daily. This is the beauty of it. You can, you can customize it to what's best for you in your life. You know when you're the freshest, when you're the sharpest. I don't know why I had English class in the afternoon. You know what I'm saying? They have English in the afternoon. Dude, that's the worst time to have English class. No, no offense to you English lovers out there, but by afternoon at 2 o'clock at school, I need to study all the fucking sleep. I don't know about you. Whenever it's the freshest for you, because it's a lot more important than an English class. One more thing, by the way, and tips for reading the Bible. No need to read it if you're not going to apply it. Respond to his teaching. Respond to what the Word of God says. Now, I love a beautiful verse in John chapter 7, verse 17, in case you're looking for truth. And I hope you are, because the world doesn't seem to be looking for truth. Because this book that you and I hold is one of the, it, it is the number one, probably the number one attacked book of all time. When you look at how it came to be, in Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 through 2, this is how the Bible came to be. Second point. Talk about how to study. But how do we get this book? Hebrews 1, 1 and 2 said that God spoke to the fathers of the past in different ways. Remember, some had dreams, some had visions. Some he spoke to directly face to face like he did with Moses. But in Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 2, now he has spoken to us through his son, Jesus Christ. And in John 12, verses 48 through 50, what I'm doing is I'm laying a foundation for you here. You take these scriptures and you build them precept by precept. You understand when I get to the end of this point in a couple minutes what we're trying to say here that God has spoken to us to his son and in John 12, 48 through 50 we're told the word of God up here judge and Jesus said, I didn't speak to my own initiative. I didn't make up what I'm telling you. Jesus says, I have spoken to you exactly what God has commanded me to speak. Catch that? Jesus says, I've told you exactly what God told me to tell you. And so when we hear the voice of Jesus, we are hearing the voice of God. Amen? So we start with that. And then if you add to that foundation, as we build John chapter 14, in verse 25 through 26, when Jesus said, I will send the help by the Holy Spirit, and he will help call to remembrance everything that I have said unto you. We understand that as he's speaking to the apostles, and he said, don't worry about this, the Holy Spirit's going to come. He's going to help you remember everything I said to you. And who wrote the books of the Bible? Many of them were the apostles, like Matthew, John, right? We've got the apostle Paul. And so when we're listening to the apostles, we are, in essence, listening to Christ. In essence, meaning we are listening to God. And so when I'm speaking, if you have to be careful and don't take my words as being equal with theirs, because my words aren't equal with the words of the apostles. If I'm preaching something different, who's true? They are not me. <clears throat> so make sure that what I speak or anyone you listen to in regard to the Word of God, make sure, like the Marines, and search the scriptures and see if these things are really so. And if my words are in agreement with the apostles, which means they are in agreement with Christ, which means they are in agreement with God, and you don't like what's being said, your argument is not with me. Your argument is with the apostles, with Jesus, with God. Take it up with God. I've tried that a time too. <coughs> And I noticed when I went out and bought the next Bible, bought the next Bible, the Word of God did not change because of my argument with God. Follow? Just saying. Just saying. And then, in John 7, verse 16 and 17, I love this, we're just going to add it with that. Here are the four passages. Hebrews 1, 1 to 2, God spoke to us through His Son. John 12, 48 to 50, Jesus spoke with God, said to speak. 
John 14, 25 and 26, the apostles spoke what Jesus said with what God said. And then in John chapter 7, verse 16, how many of you want to know what the truth is? You want to know that this really is the teaching of God. Here's the key to it. Jesus says, if you are willing to do, actually put it this way, if any man is willing to do the will of the Father, you'll know the teaching, whether it's of God or not. See, I'm going to give you an example. I didn't ask for permission. It's too late now. You came up out of the water. How'd you do? Totally new, right? And when you come up, did you have any doubts at all? She knew she had done, and actually after the baptism, she came up, she knew she had done the right thing. If any man is willing, because she was willing. We're singing that song. Remember? It is faith. We're singing. Now, according to my eye, I see something. It's like, this is my important. That's Taylor. Taylor's going to work while we're singing. And on, when Dolly's playing the song, we can stop and we can talk before the final verse. That was an automatically played song. There was no stopping, man, until it was finished. That was the name of the song. She'd come to be, because she was willing to do the will of heart, she understood that the teaching was accurate. No doubt about it. So if you're wondering how do I know the truth of the teaching of God, if you're willing to do the will of the Father, you'll know the teaching, whether it is of God. So number three, what sets this book apart from all other books? I love that picture. Father reading the Bible. Second Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 through 17. Turn with me in your Bibles, if you will, to this passage. Second Timothy chapter 3. Verse 14 through 17. Is it okay with you that I'm just kind of talking normal with you today? Last week, someone came up to me after the service and said, Boy, it's hot in here today. So, what do you mean? Well, you were on fire. Right? Like, I said, Well, thank you. Appreciate that. I just want you to have joy with us this morning and understand the strength that we have. Here's how it came to be, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14. You, however, continue the things you learn and become convinced of, knowing from whom you learned them, that from childhood you have known, and I'm going to pause. I want you to look for some, at least four things that are going to set God's word apart from any other book. They cannot be said of any other book. Here it comes. From childhood you have known, the first one is, you have known the, the sacred writings. Which are able to give you wisdom that leads to salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God, profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. I promised. It is sacred. It gives wisdom that leads to salvation. No other book does that. It's inspired by God. Remember the old days as kids, it'd be wintertime, it'd be fall down the window, or we create our own fall. You ever do that? You breathe on the window, and go, and then what'd you do? You wrote it. You wrote in it. It eventually would disappear. But if you could get the vapor to reappear, you can still see the image that you had written. Remember that? That's the idea of the word inspired. It was you breathed. You breathed on the window and the road. The difference in this book is God's the one who's doing the breathing. God's the one who's doing the breathing through the Holy Spirit. Second Peter chapter 1, there were men moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. It was God doing the breathing, leading through the Holy Spirit, and then men wrote what God had to say. Sacred. No other books like that. He's wisdom to the salvation. No other book like that. Inspired by God. No other book like that. And then it equips us completely. Amen? Complete. We'll be able to stand before God completely because of what He's given to us to equip us for every good work. And that explains my loved ones why this book is under attack. That novel you're reading at home, that Harlequin romance, that math book you're studying, 
That newspaper you're reading, that magazine you're reading an article, they're not under attack, are they? The Word of God. Why? Because Jesus said to Pilate right before he died, he said, I come to bear witness to the truth. Pilate said, What is truth? The Old Testament says, Thy word. Thy word is truth. That's why this book is under attack. But any magazine you have, it's not. It's not under attack. <coughs> Math books, science books, they're not under attack. But God's word is. But then the human element. Do you have your love letters still? Do you have those letters that you special love on? No. I think you need time to confirm it. I see somebody can do it for this. Are they special to you? Is that why you still have them? Right? In the book of Romans, chapter 16, I want to tell you something. I don't know if I was going to write And I haven't finished the project yet. I want to do this with, I want to put your name in Romans, chapter 16. You want to what? I wanted to. you got to love this picture, by the way. I don't know if anybody, I was kind of watching for a reaction from the crowd, and maybe having one. This picture came up, I think you kind of smiled when you saw it. That's really Bogey. That's his sister reading him the word of God when he's just a little boy. He's just a teddy bear. He's just a teddy bear. I was playing in that since last night when I saw that picture. Just a teddy bear. By the way, if you're ever scared to share the word of God with somebody, here's a suggestion I heard something. So I think it's pretty good. It might work. If you're scared to share the message with somebody, like you, you know, they're talking to a family member, they usually get scared, right? You know, the public's a family member, and, and, they're, and they're, they're open to teach. Yeah, I want to hear what you have to say, but you're still scared to that. Practice sharing God's word with a stuffed animal. Well, chances are, when we go out this week, we're going to meet some people who are so stuffed and pull themselves. You know what I'm saying? They're practice on a stuffed animal. Go on a friend there and talk to that. Talk to that stuffed animal. Well, I don't know. It's just had to put that in there for you. All right, Ted Bear. All right. <laughs> the human element, though, in Romans chapter 16, when you start looking down through Paul's final chapter, any of you have trouble remembering names? Right? That's one of my greatest weaknesses used to be remembering names. It is still not my strongest point, maybe, but. I do better than I used to. I, I, I really try to work on that because there's nothing in person. They say there's nothing among all things a lot right at the top of this. Maybe not the top top top. The person loves to hear this more than anything else. It's their own name. Now for me, I like pizza better than someone remembers my name. But they love to hear their name. Because it acknowledges that you know who they are and you acknowledge them. And as he goes down, there are at least 28 individuals mentioned by name. I'm not going to take time to read them with you this morning. But what I would love to do, we'd love to have done them, was just start putting your names in there. Greek in verse 3, or even in verse 16. I commend to you our sister, Gold, who is a servant. Receive her in the Lord, the man worthy of the saints. Help her in whatever matter she may be with you. She herself has also been a helper of many of myself as well. I just picked Goldie at random, but I see the describing Greek. Greek Donnie and Jamie, my fellow workers in Christ, who for my life risked their own names. You get the picture? You just start going down through there and put the names. Greek JR, verse 5. Jr. said, I didn't know my name was in there. Greek Jr. I love it. It was the first convert to Christ, maybe. You get the picture, don't you? The treasure for the Apostle Paul is not just the Word of God, but the people that are revealed in the Word of God. Because Paul knew these individuals' names by heart. And he wrote to them in the letter that they received. I mean, what do you like?
you have a litter like that? Wouldn't you like to have a litter like that when they pop the ball? Let me ask you again. Wouldn't you like to have a letter like that when they're popping? Yeah. You already did. You got it right there. Your names are there. What David talks about, our names are enrolled in heaven. Your names are in there. Isn't that great? That God would give us a book like this, which for many is a forgotten treasure. And then when you think of it, man, that is great that God would give us a book like this. Well, that shouldn't be surprised, you know, should it? When you consider how great our God is. Let's stay up and sing about it. Let's sing it to Him today. Sing it to Him. I think I think the other. Sing this song to Him. And you say, How great is our God? How great is <laughs> Thank you. Let's stand. Talk to you in this song. Thank you for the greatest treasure.
this church was doing then, at that moment. It says, day by day, continually one line in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they were talking, taking their mill together with gladness and sincerity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord was adding to their number day by day those who were being saved. If people see us doing things together, if they see us more than just here on Sunday coming out of the building and going home, if they see a lot of activity, people get curious. What do they have I don't have? What's going on there I'd like to know about? See, the thing is, you look to your left and your right, and I see it every Sunday, there's chairs in there. Those are shared ways you feel by God's people. That's where we all come in. Not just the men, not just the team, but all of us. Because as we grow in the Lord, and what, what these meetings are about, and these meetings are about you. Where are you at in the Lord? What do you need to know about the Lord? What do you need to know about the Bible? We may be able to help you with. What do you about prayer? What about, hey, I have this dark secret that I don't know what to do but other than give it to the Lord. Whatever it may be, this is about the family. These beings aren't about, can we get this done or just, no, it's all about the growth of our spiritual family. This is coming down to us. The building is very important. Don't get this wrong. I don't want you to take it the wrong way. Then. The building is for us, and that's God's building. But God's real building is here in front of us. And if we have one week prayer, we're not going to be able to stand the test of the weather and the time. And I don't want to see no one lose their eternity. Because this is about eternity, people. This is not just about today, tomorrow, one holiday coming up, or a company picnic, whatever. No. If you get to face the Lord in the next five minutes, are you ready to say what you need to say or hear? God well done. This is all about us, but as a group. And we're growing. And we have to grow this way. And then pretty soon, there won't be enough chairs to have to buy more. Because people are going to be desperate for what we just talked about, what we talked about in Sunday school. People are desperate out there. They need us. Christ needs us to deliver the message. But if you can't understand the Word of God, you can't talk about the Word of God. So this is mainly what we want you to do, to grow. And you, it might be one simple word to change a life. You don't know. We're just the messenger. The harvest is coming behind us. He will take care of it. But that's what's going on with the building. And as we know more, you will know more. And as I said earlier, any questions, write them down. Each week we're going to come up and say something about it from here from this point on. But I want you to realize we're not going to give you a maybe or a guess answer. That is not in my nature. I want to tell you something I know for sure is happening. But this decision is all of ours. Not just the men, it's not just one person, it's all. So this is our future coming up. Pray about it. Let the Holy Spirit guide you. Go to the Word, whatever it takes, so you're comfortable. But in the next few weeks, we would like to start getting with you. If you want to get to church, that's fine. If you feel more comfortable here, that's great. We need to talk to you. Take some time, half hour, 15 minutes. You'll be surprised what might happen if you take a half hour out of the way to just talk about you and Jesus. It'll be exciting. Okay, Dean. That's all I have at the moment. If you have any questions, go home and write down the meeting. Okay? So we can discuss it. And then when we get to that point where things come, that answer may come right up. Pray to God about this. This is all got to do with Christ. This is not me. It's not. It's all of us and our love of Christ in eternity. Thank you. All we'll come together is our first time, brother. Okay. You want to close this out in prayer? Yep. I will. When you do, we'll together. Love y'all. Have a great week. Lord. As we prepare to leave this building today, bless all those who are here and bless all the ones who are not here today, Lord. Let them know that your great love is growing, that your love is moving through us. Your Holy Spirit is rising us up to meet the 
challenge that you're putting before us. It's just only to you, Lord, that we're going to achieve all these things. But for both, Lord, and your children here in front of me, I want them to grow. I want them to learn. They're already one. They're in heaven. We have to work together and learn from your word how to stand strong for your son. And I, bless, I ask blessings on all those ones that are still sick, Lord, Tommy and all those ones, the ones that have had illness. Put your loving hands upon them, Lord, and guide them through the time to get them back here. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> <laughs>